Welcome to Learn to Code with Python. What is Python? Well, we begin with a July 2018 article from The Economist with the headline, Python is becoming the world's most popular coding language. And indeed it is. Python is an object-oriented computer programming language. I understand some of those fancy words like object-oriented may sound brand new to you, but as we all know from popular culture, computer programming is the act of writing instructions for your computer to follow, commands that tell your computer how to perform some kind of procedure. Now, Python is just one of many available programming languages, but it is a phenomenal first language to learn for new developers such as yourself. For one, Python is ridiculously popular. How popular? Well, last year, Google searches for Python exceeded those for Kim Kardashian. And I assure you, 100 hours spent learning to code will prove much more beneficial than 100 hours looking at celebrities. So Python is popular, it's in demand, companies are using it extensively, it's in vogue. All of this is great. But more importantly than popularity, Python is renowned for its relative simplicity compared to other languages. Now, don't get me wrong, programming is hard and confusing. However, many of Python's language features remove the complexity that comes bundled with other programming languages. The syntax of Python, and when I use the words syntax, I mean the words and the letters and the symbols that we use to write code, the syntax of Python is frequently praised for its relative easiness and beauty compared to other languages. Let's talk a little bit as well about the history of Python. Python was developed by a Dutch gentleman named Guido van Rossum and first released in 1991. There's a picture of him on the right, and he looks like a guy who's generally happy with his life, which is great. Believe it or not, the language was not named after the snake. Rather, van Rossum named it after the British sketch comedy group Monty Python. However, because of the name and the symbolism that it kind of provokes, Python still adopts a blue and yellow snake as its official symbol. So it wasn't named after the snake, but it uses the snake sort of as its visual mascot. Today, Python is a free open source project with thousands of global contributors and millions of users. By the way, the words open source mean that Python's code is publicly available and free to use. It's not owned or copyrighted by any corporation or individual. It's just this global community effort to develop this language. Python is used by thousands of companies, including big names like Google, YouTube, Dropbox, Netflix, and Pinterest. So let's talk a little bit about Python 2 versus Python 3. These are two different versions of the language. Python 2 was first released in 2000, and Python 3, its successor, was released in 2008. The latest current version of Python 2 is 2.7, and the latest version of Python 3 is 3.7, with the next update, which is 3.8, scheduled for release in October 2019. So here's the problem. The community ran into a bit of an issue when Python 3 was first introduced in 2008 because it was not backwards compatible with Python 2. What that meant is that old code written in Python 2 was not guaranteed to work in Python 3. So developers and companies were slow to adopt Python 3, the latest version, because many times it required extensive rewrites of old code, and that takes time and effort. So today, Python 3 has now established itself as the de facto standard, the modern version of the language, and that's what we're going to be learning in this course. Now, both Python 2.7 and 3.7 can be installed on the same computer without any conflict, but there's really no reason to do that because we're going to be sticking with Python 3. In fact, the Mac OS operating system and most versions of Linux actually already pre-install Python 2, the legacy version of the language. Windows does not include the language at all. But in this course, since we're going to be working with Python 3, we're going to be installing everything from scratch. So no matter what operating system you're working with, we're going to be installing Python 3 and working with that. And for either operating system, we're going to have a separate set of video tutorials to show you the setup process uh, for the language. By the way, this course will be taught and recorded on a Mac OS X machine. There may be some differences between uh, the OS, uh, Mac OS and the Windows computer if you're working on that. But for the most part, the course should be pretty identical, especially once we actually get to the code. So the first few lessons, the setup lessons may differ and you're not required to watch any lessons that don't relate to your operating system. But once we actually get to the code editor, Python 3 basically works the same regardless of what operating system you're working with. 
All right, so let's talk a little bit about upsides and downsides, or in other words, some of the advantages and disadvantages of Python. I wanna make sure you get a full picture, a complete overview of why you might wanna use this language, what it's good for and what it's not so good for. So compared to other languages that you could learn to code in, Python focuses more on developer productivity and happiness. So you might be looking at this and saying, well, that doesn't make any sense. Shouldn't every language be focused on developer happiness? And the answer is not necessarily. Some languages are optimized for speed. Some languages are optimized for computer efficiency. Some languages are optimized to minimize the chance of errors. Some are just you know, as quick as possible, like a financial trading application. Uh, Python may not be the best choice of language for something like like that where it's absolutely critical to have calculations happen within a matter of milliseconds. Python is more focused on making it a good experience for the developer. And how it does that is by generally being less strict with its technical and syntactical requirements. Python also requires you to generally write less lines of code to accomplish the same things. And just like with strictness in real life, you get the, the good and the bad. Whenever you're less strict, you're probably gonna be less disciplined. There's a lot of, uh, greater chance for bad habits to sneak into your code. There's a lot of greater potential for error, but it also means you have a greater chance for experimentation and a greater opportunity for fun and to try different things out and to break things. So Python is less strict. It's kind of like the parent that lets you get away with more things and you kind of learn and grow as a person and all that. But uh, compared to other languages, it's not as demanding, which makes it, again, a really good choice for your first language. Python is what's called an object-oriented language. We mentioned that term earlier. There are other categories of languages, but you don't have to worry about those now. Just realize that when somebody asks you what kind of language is Python, it's an object-oriented programming language because there are different types. Python also ships with a large standard library of utility classes and functions. You don't have to worry about what classes and functions are. Uh, when you think about a library, it's basically the collection of tools that comes with a language, uh, the bundles of functionality that come pre-built into it that uh, allow it to do uh, many special things. Just like a library in real life is this collection of information, so is a library when it comes to a programming language. So for example, Python has things related to mathematics and statistics and uh, network or connections, which means making requests to websites. So you don't have to build those tools from scratch. They're all built into the Python programming language. They're baked in. A common expression you'll hear in the community is batteries are included with Python. So when you think about a toy, whenever the batteries come with the toy, the toy is ready to go. It's ready to be operated. It's ready to be played with. It's the same idea with Python. A lot of things that you might need to do as a developer come bundled with Python. Again, because its focus is developer productivity and happiness. It doesn't want you building all these things from scratch or looking for them. It wants to have as many of them already in the language available for you to use. So the kind of drawback to focusing so much on developer productivity and happiness and being less strict is that Python isn't necessarily the fastest language. It runs slower than compiled languages like Java or C++. Again, when you're starting out and you're looking for a programming language to learn, you're not really worried about building the fastest application. You're not worried about building some kind of stock trading application. So I wouldn't worry about this for now, but later on as you grow as a developer, you'll realize that a lot of programming and a lot of language selection comes down to to figuring out what it is that you're building and what is the optimal language for that. Speaking of building things, here are just a few things that you can build with Python and its related ecosystem. You can start off with basic programming applications that we all build, like card games or chess or checkers or battleship. You can use Python for web development with the Django or Flask frameworks. Now, if any of these word, words like frameworks or libraries are unfamiliar, they're just basically extension packs. They're things that allow you to do additional things with a programming language. But you can use Python for web development, which means building uh, websites. You can use it for machine learning, which is a new scientific discipline related to statistics. You can do data analysis and visualization with the Pandas library. You can scrape the web, which means take information from websites using beautiful soup and scrapey. You can even do something as crazy as video game development with the Pi game library. There is a huge ecosystem of tools available in Python. You really just have to dream up what it is that you want to build. I guarantee there will be libraries related to helping you accomplish that goal. 
For now, of course, our goal is to just give you the basics that so that we're going to be able to build the most simplest thing, and that is going to be the top left corner here, basic programming applications like card games. We're going to conclude this course by actually building a card game from scratch. Uh, but all of these things are, should just give you some inspiration, some hope, uh, some visualization of the things that are possible once you learn to program with a language like Python, which again is renowned for its uh, simplicity. Of course, complex languages, you can do complex things with, but when it comes to that sort of interplay between the simplicity of the language versus the complexity of what it can build, Python is incredible. I think it's a remarkably strong language that's capable of doing so much uh, with so little, which is what makes it such a great choice for a first programming language to learn. Python will teach you a lot of things that are applicable across the programming industry and across other programming languages, but it remains super simple to use relative to those. That's really all there is to cover in this lesson. I just wanted to give you a brief overview of what we were going to cover in this course, what we can use Python for, get you inspired uh, to start coding and to start setting up everything we need uh, to start working with this incredibly powerful tool that will help you grow as a person, help you grow as a thinker, help you grow as a developer, and obviously hopefully help you grow in your career as well. So the next thing uh, in line for us, of course, is to set up and install and configure Python on our operating system. The next sequence of lessons is going to be focused on Mac OS machines, and afterwards we're going to have a sequence of lessons for Windows machines. Again, you don't have to worry about any lessons that are unrelated to your operating system. Just skip to the ones that apply to you and follow those instructions to set up Python. After that, we're also going to be setting up Visual Studio Code, which is going to be the text editor in which we're actually going to be writing our code. And once that is all set up, again, across all of these different operating systems, then all of the students can kind of sync up. And from that point forward, all of the code and all the lessons will be the same and every student will have or should have the same experience. So I look forward to a great experience. I look forward to a great course. I'm really excited to teach you all that programming and Python can do for you. And I will see you in the next lesson.